Good evening and welcome to Green Wave Hockey here on FCAT Sports. Skate Dr. Lou Bordeaux here with you the, with the pregame show tonight. Uh, we're going to be treated to some play-by-play -play with our friends from Bear Country a little bit later on. But as for right now, the East Hampton Eagles are here at the Collins Moylan Arena tonight. In here to talk about it right now, Green Wave head coach Adam Bouchard. Coach, good evening. Good evening, Skate Doc. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, East Hampton Eagles... Two-time defending Western Mass champs, little different look this season. What are you What are you going to expect from them? Yeah, you know, it's always a good a good matchup whenever Green Wave and East Hampton match up against each other. You know, having them coming in as a two-time Western Mass uh, state champ, as you said, they knocked us out two years ago in the semifinals, if you recall. Um, it's it's always a good good battle. We're looking to start the year off. We haven't seen them yet at all this year. We know they're 0 2. We haven't seen them on the ice at all yet. Um, they did graduate a bunch of players last year. I think they graduated 11. Right. And then they lost a few players to club hockey. But they still have Garen Fujil out there, who that boy is a special hockey player. So we're going to have our hands full with him tonight. He certainly is. Uh, we had a, a great win against Southwick one week ago here. Uh, how how'd the team look this week in practice? You know, we, we came back at, uh, at practice after our game against Southwick, back to business, right? We don't look back on our games. We always look forward to whoever we're playing next. But I really think we put a good hard week of practice in, get ourselves ready. We have a lot of hockey over the next five weeks here. I think we go about 13 games over the next 24 days. So um, we have a lot of hockey to go, and, and the team's ready, poised, and looking forward to get, grab another two points. And we're going to try and bring as many of those games to you on FCAT Sports as we possibly can. Coach, going to wish you good luck. I'll be over here with you tonight. That's fantastic. Thanks, Doc. All right. We'll be back with the post-game show later on, but opening face-off, starting lineups, and our friends from Bear Country right after this. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Extreme Networks, customer-driven networking for your business, software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure, extremenetworks.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. Webbs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in the center of South Deerfield. Everyone to continue to show respect and 
and sportsmanship throughout this conference. Now, at this time, we'd like to ask you to please rise and remove your caps for the playing of our national anthem. All right, we are set to go. Collins Boylan Arena, East Hampton and Greenfield. Great atmosphere here. We didn't have arena DJs back in our day, Howie. No, we were lucky to get one song, and that <laughs> song usually was national anthem, so. It's still weird not to hear Gene Herrick's voice doing the PA. <laughs> of course, Gene Herrick, the longtime PA guy here. Yeah. Yeah, he grew up, he lived uh, one street over. He did. Yep. yep. <laughs> I took many shortcuts from the rink to his house uh, growing up playing hockey. So the green wave up Greenfield, getting ready, down by the net. Talking to Riley Drew, the starting goalkeeper. It'll be Riley Drew in the nets against Jaden Darling, the senior out of Northampton for the East Hampton Eagles. Important to set a tone early physically, Todd Howe, I think for both teams. I think you want to come out here and I was going to throw that first big hit and get things going. Yeah, I think it's more import important for East Hampton. I, I think if if they saw the Southwood game and how much Southwick was hitting Greenfield and how it slowed them down a little bit, I think that's the best way for them to attack. But we'll, we'll see what their game plan is as we get set to get going. It'll be Fugel centering Sullivan and Galfin, I believe, on the far side. It'll be Bauman and McGoldrick on defense for the wave. Derek Lenoy is out there on a left wing. We're having a slight delay. Was we're, we're just making sure we have all the practice pucks yeah, off the ice say, before we start the game. Pick up the practice pucks. That is a that is a big no-no. <laughs> and centering the first line for Greenfield is Kyle Barnes, the junior out of Frontier. And we are underway on Hockey Night in Greenfield. Puck dumped in behind the Greenfield net. Back to get it is Kevin Bauman, swings the net. Goes up the right wing boards, pinched by East Hampton, and the zone is cleared. Eagles knock it back in. Backhanding it up and around was Delisle. And a bump on the far boards. And they swing it out in front of the nets. And hung up, though, and knocked away on a good defensive play by Barnes. Headman pass up on the right wing side. Shot wide of the net as a good bid there early for Greenfield. Yeah, Mike McGoldrick gave a great feeder pass to the red line. And uh, looks like it was number four, Adam Savoy. Just shot it wide. Quick line change for East Hampton. Bryant now skating it up into East Hampton territory. The big defenseman centering pass tipped. Back to the point shot. Saved by Darling. Rebound crams into the corner. After it is O'Sullivan on a four check. Behind the net. Now in the corner. O'Sullivan now has it. Try to slide it in front. Shut off. Spins back away. Backhands up the center of the ice. And the ball is knocked to the far wall and the Eagles are able to clear it out to center ice. That was a good job by Greenfield cycling in the corner to try and get some movement on the defenseman before they can get a break on net. Backhanded up out of the zone by the Eagles. Shot back in by Greenfield. Comes all the way around to the far boards. Ryan O'Connor after it. And puck slid in front. O'Sullivan now in the left corner. Tries to backhand it behind the net as the wave circles around. Quick shot through a screen. Save. O'Sullivan there banging at the rebound, but it's covered up by Darling. Faceoff will be to his right with 13 17 to go in period one. Well, we've been two minutes into the game, and Greenfield's done a great job cycling down there. The defensive for East Hampton have to keep moving, or they're going to find a cycle spot and get a great shot on it. They had a great opportunity there. Aiden Roach on the draw for Greenfield, and battle for it at the dot. Goes back behind the net, and the East Hampton defenseman bangs it up the far boards. Up but not out. Shot from the point goes wide of the net. And coming back around to get it is Matt Sullivan who closed the zone. And now with it for Greenfield is Aiden Roach. Roach now at the blue line. Gets relieved of the puck. He gets knocked back to the Greenfield end of the ice. Mikey McColdrick after it. Oh, and he gets stolen away by Sullivan. Sullivan behind the net with a good play. Tries to center. Centering pass shot. Blocked in front. Goes wide. And we have a whistle. And the net was dislodged. So 
A nice play there by Sullivan. That was a nice play. There was just too many bodies in front of the net before the goalie hit someone in the leg. And uh, shout out to Todd Happy Boyton because moving the net is always important when you get a rush on you. <laughs> Happy would never do that. Happy, of course, played for Amherst. We won't talk about those days. Face off to the right of Riley Drew, Matt uh, or Pete Sullivan, rather, the freshman for Northampton on the draw. For East Hampton, one by Greenfield, by Bauman, and it's up ahead to center ice. On a four check is Jake Croto. The puck ends up in East Hampton's side of the ice, but they clear the zone. Lead pass, knocked at center ice. And here comes Bauman. Bauman up the left side with some speed. Bauman swings around, trying to slide it in front, gets blocked off the puck. And the Eagles are able to clear it up and out of the zone. O'Sullivan and Bauman battling for it. They get knocked in behind the East Hampton net. This is Jake Delisle. The defenseman goes up the far boards. And they are able to clear the zone. Headman pass. This is Ryan O'Connor. O'Connor forced to the boards. And the buck is cleared up and out by Bowie Harris. And now on a four check, it's O'Sullivan. Two on two with Bauman. O'Sullivan's backhander goes wide of the net. Puck goes to the far boards. And the Eagles are able to clear. East Hampton's doing a good job breaking the puck out of their own zone. They just have, haven't been able to get past the defenseman the way they want to yet. O'Connor tried to force it into the greenfield end. It's broken up. Kyle Barnes fires it around the boards. And the wave is able to clear the zone. Barnes now after it again by the blue line. And there with him is Prusak. Now Barnes with it. Barnes, top of the slot. High shot saved by Darling. He gloves it. Face off will be to his left. Another nice play there. They're doing a good job through the uh, neutral zone, being able to bring that puck in and get some solid shots. And once they're in the zone, again, they're able to cycle the game. Face off actually to the right of Darling. 11.23 to go in period one. No score on the scoreboard. Kyle Barnes on the draw for Greenfield. It's forced to the boards. After it is uh, shot from the point is Bryant. Goes wide of the net. It was tipped by Daryl Grenoise on the way through, and it was just a little too high. The goalie wasn't prepared for that tip. Bryant's going to swing behind his own net with it and bang it up the boards to Kyle Barnes. Barnes up the left wing. Gone side. Swings left side. Barnes still with it. Barnes swings the net. Broken up. Puck is knocked loose and cleared by East Hampton. I was going to say when this play came out, I thought Barnes should give it back to Bryant, but Barnes did a good job bringing that deep into the zone. Headman pass. East Hampton with it. On the right side, it's Sullivan. Matt Sullivan in on Drew. Shot to save. And Riley Drew came out, cut the angle, and held on. They'll face it off to his left. Yeah, he was looking to go five hole there, and Drew covered it right up quick. Riley Drew, good at that butterfly. But that time, he just came out and gave him nothing to shoot at. And that's really uh, East Hampton's second opportunity, strong opportunity to score a goal here. Pete Sullivan on the draw against Doe Sullivan. So Sullivan against Doe Sullivan on the faceoff. And face off one by East Hampton. Forced to the near boards. Now here's a clearing pass. Aiden Roach now on a four check. Roach has Savoy with him. Roach is shot. Goes wide. And gets his own rebound. Slides it in front, though broken up by East Hampton. And skated back up by the Eagles. Up the right side, this is Jake Delisle. Delisle on the high slot. Shot saved by Drew. Rebound comes back out to Greenfield and is cleared. And this is going to be icing. We'll take a 30 second break. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield brought to you by Gilmore and Farrell Insurance. <laughs> and off the draw, a quick shot and a score by Tyler Galfin, the sophomore out of Hampshire Regional. That one was almost too quick. It caught the uh, upper part of the crossbar and deflected into one nothing. East Hampton. Yeah, to kind of recap what happened, uh, right off the faceoff, uh, East Hampton on the back of the defenseman. He slid a little bit to the left. Drew went down, shot went up off the crossbar, and Greenfield's down one nothing. one nothing East Hampton. And the guy who scored the goal now back after it in his own end. That's Tyler Galfin. A head man pass. And it's picked up by Jacob Bryant. Bryant. Swings up the boards and out of the zone. O'Sullivan well, now pushes it into the East Hampton end. Behind the nets. And cleared up but not out. Shot back into the zone by Bryant. Goes behind the net. East Hampton after it on the far boards. And they're able to clear. 
Bryant now has it, goes cross ice to MJ Pollen. Back over to Bryant. Bryant not, is knocked down, and the wave able to clear. And the puck gets knocked back down to the East Hampton end of the ice. And this is going to be icing. They'll bring it down and face it off to the right of Riley Drew with Greenfield trailing 1 0, 9 13 to go, period one. It's always interesting to see after an early goal just how both teams react. And, and I got to say, both of them just came out. They kept playing. There was no change. Greenfield's not getting upset or feeling like it's an emergency. We're early. The draw to the right of Drew. Barnes now gets it back behind the net. And it's cleared up and out. Barnes after it in the neutral zone. Battling with Lenoy. And they push it back into the East Hampton zone. It's cleared right back out. Ryan O'Connor now at the blue line of East Hampton over to John Callahan. And they push it into the Greenfield end. Now the wave on a forecheck. This is Kyle Barnes on the right side. Barnes goes into the corner. Barnes swings the net centering pass. And a shot from the point. Did it go in? No. Looked great. like it deflected out. It, it was a great play behind the net. He passed it through probably three bodies, get into the slot. Open shot. I think it snuck a little bit underneath the wing of the goaltender. It's just not enough to go into the net. Yeah, that was Kevin Bauman on the shot. A great drop by Barnes. Face off to the right of Darling with 8.39 to go in period one. That was a great save by Darling to keep it one to nothing. That could have easily gone in. Bauman on the draw. Brian Bauman for Greenfield. Forced to the boards, but cleared out by East Hampton. Now pushed into the Greenfield end. On a four check is Fugel behind the net. Fugel after it. Bumping with McGoldrick behind the net. Slam back around the boards to Jake Croto. And now Brian up the boards to Bauman. Brian now clears his own. And it gets hacked back the other way by Matt Sullivan. And McGoldrick now after it. He'll swing behind his own net. He'll stop and go back the other way. Up the boards, looking for Croto. And McGoldrick's going to skate it out. Mike McGoldrick up the boards, up the center ice. McGoldrick pulls back, tries to slide it in front to O'Sullivan. Can't quite connect with it. And East Hampton hammers it back up the boards. McGoldrick can't keep it in. And it's back out at center ice. Greenfield will have to clear. East Hampton's actually playing defensive style, and I'm not sure if they did at the beginning of the game. But they're keeping three guys high now. And I, I can't believe they're doing it after a 1-0 score. Aiden Roach now with it. A steal behind the net. Roach spins back away. Roach tries to slide it in front and gets broken up. And East Hampton's able to clear the zone. And now this is Kevin Bauman up the left side. Kevin Bauman with a wrist shot and a save by Darling. Rebound goes behind the net as Greenfield has had a couple of good opportunities here in the last couple of minutes. Greenfield's out shooting them early. Uh, I, I'd say uh, seven to four. Headman pass at center ice. And it was a steal at center ice. This is Porter Clancy after it. And it's broken up. And here comes the Eagles the other way. Shot from the point saved by Riley Drew. He will hang on and cover. Face off to his right with 6.50 to go in the first period. I can guarantee you if we were in high school, they wouldn't play music this loud either. Does that mean we're old? <laughs> I think it does. Face off will be to the right of Riley Drew. Quick line change for Greenfield. It's going to be the barnes Lenoy line out there, along with MJ Pollen and Bowie Harris. And they're going to take, actually, the faceoff's going to be outside the zone, they're going to say. Not sure why. But the faceoff will be at the blue line now. It's a break for Greenfield. Barnes now on the draw with Sullivan. One by Greenfield. Up the right side, this is Derek Lenoy. Lenoy swings the net. Looking to slide it in front. Centering pass blocked. Back after it is Bauman. Bauman now behind the net. Greenfield cycling down low. Back to the point. Wrist shot from the point. Blocked in front by Bowie Harris. Rebound goes to the far boards. Back to the point to Pollen. Pollen with a wrister. Deflected far wide. Harris now slides it in front. Just wide of the net. And a whistle. 
and the net has been dislodged again. Yeah, they don't put in the spikes like the old days, so we're going to see this a little bit, especially before the game. They they didn't really, uh, the ice was already hard, so right. nothing melting it in. But it's interesting to watch East Hampton in the defensive zone. They're really playing a box and one. So they're playing a box with a guy in the middle, and Greenfield's doing a good job cycling on the outside, and they're breakthrough, uh, getting through, cutting through the seams of that box. Bauman on the draw for Greenfield. Goes to the corner behind the East Hampton net. They swing it around, kept in on the far boards and slung back around the other way. As the wave, you can just tell, Todd, they're, they're just knocking at the door. At some point, they're going to convert. Yeah, the ice is definitely leaning toward the East Hampton goalie right now. Now on a four check. This is O'Sullivan. Drop pass back, broken up. And it's on the near boards as the Eagles trying to clear. And they do clear the zone. Back to get it is Bauman. Bauman in his own end. Flips it back up ahead, and it's deflected down and dumped back in by East Hampton. McColdrick now with it in the high slot. McColdrick goes up the right wing to Jake Crota, who slams it up ahead, and this is going to be icing. We're going to bring it back and face it off next to Riley Drew with 5.28 to go, and East Hampton a one nothing lead. That was a nice play, play on the uh, Greenfield side. They're tired. You can tell they immediately went to the uh, changeup when he threw it in. Took the, Take the icing, take the face off but at least catch a breather, get a fresh line out there. Face off to the left of Riley Drew. Draw control by Greenfield. Bryant flips it up and out. It's a rolling puck, and this may very well wind up being icing. Yes, we'll take a 30-second break. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield, brought to you by Gilmore and Farrell Insurance. Play back on, Pollen bounces it up the boards. Knocked back in by East Hampton. MJ Pollen now, the big man behind the net. MJ Pollen pushes it up out of the zone. Barnes on a four check after it, battle in the neutral zone. Dumped back into the Greenfield end. Bryant now with it. Jake Bryant looking for a headman pass for Lenoig. Ends up on the stick of East Hampton's Tyler Darling who clears it out. Jake Bryant now goes cross ice to Lenoig. Or to Barnes, rather. Barnes on the left wing forecheck. Has Lenoy with him. Drop pass back to Pollen. Slap shot just wide of the net. As MJ with the one-timer. And Bryant battling for it at the blue line. And it's skated out by East Hampton. This is Fugel. Fugel swings the net. Knocked down by Pollen behind the net. And a whistle. And I believe the net dislodged again. Yes. I thought they were going to get Pollen for a trip. Yeah, Pollen did a good job. Fugil went behind the net. Pollen had a decision to make. Does he cut in front of the net, cut him off, or does he follow him? He followed him, and Fugil, not expecting it, tried to stop and turn back, and he saw next week a little bit. Face off to the left of Riley Drew. Bauman on the draw for the wave, trailing 1-0. Four minutes left in the first period. And now this is Bowie Harris behind the net. Swings it back up the left wing boards. Not out though, Fugel slap shot. Hit the defenseman. That was Bauman who caught that one. Kevin, puck on the near boards. And headman pass to O'Sullivan, just on. O'Sullivan shot, blocked in front. As he was trying to use the defenseman as a screen. And the puck is cleared out. Brian Bauman now dumps it back in for Greenfield. O'Sullivan and Bauman out there. And now a headman pass to Fugel. It's pushed into wave territory. Kevin Bauman now back after it goes up the right wing boards. As he's tamping that quick line change. And the clearing pass is still in the Greenfield zone. Bowie Harris now with it. Harris behind the net. Spins away from the four checker. Up the left side to Roach. Aiden Roach skates it out of the zone. Roach blocked at the blue line by East Hampton. And that's going to be a penalty as slashing the stick out of the hands of the East Hampton player was Aiden Roach, and he'll go to the box. He knew it right away. Once he hit him on the stick and they dropped out of his hands, he just turned and went to the box as his, uh, one of his players was touching the puck. It's unfortunate. It's a new rule in hockey, and it, it's, you'll see it a lot in the NHL. It comes, you knock it out of someone's hand, you're going to go in the box. 
Base off will be to the right of Riley Drew. It's the first power play for the Eagles. And the first penalty of the game will be two minutes for Aiden Roach for a slash. So we'll see how the Greenfield penalty kill does. It'll be interesting, too, to see how East Hampton sets up. Fusion will be in the center, and we'll see what kind of design they use. Jake Kroger on the draw for the wave. And they're not going to give the draw to Fugel as he comes out. And the draw controlled by East Hampton. Fugel, back to the point. This is Delisle. Delisle, wrist shot. Oh, saved by Riley Drew. And he hangs on. Nice save by Drew. That was similar to the goal they scored. Drew went down with the butterfly style, and the shot went up. And this may be what East Hampton's trying to do with him, but it was a great glove save by Drew. Adam Savoy comes out for Greenfield, replacing Croto, who goes to the bench. Draw the left of Drew. Delisle now, back to the point. Delisle tries to slide it, broken up. And up and not quite out. No, they didn't clear the zone. And Greenfield will flip it out to the East Hampton end. 135 to go on the man advantage. 2.40 to go on the first period game clock. East Hampton leading 1-0. Headman man pass, Errant, and is slammed back down the other way by Greenfield's Kevin Bauman. East Hampton setting up with two men high behind the net and two men on the opposite blue line for Greenfield. McGoldrick slams it back down to the East Hampton end. So far, one shot on this power play by the Eagles. And here comes East Hampton up the left side behind the Greenfield net as they try to set up. But the puck, puck is taken away and slammed to the other end by Bowie Harris. 57 seconds to go on the man advantage for the Eagles. East Hampton's having a tough time setting up their power play, getting in the zone to get the men in spots. That now a lead by Delisle. Delisle now with it, shot. Weird angle saved by Drew. Slammed around the boards, kept in at the point by Tyler Galfin for East Hampton. And now we got sticks flying in front of the net. We got to have another penalty. It's the same thing. This time it's going to be, I believe, on Jake Bryant. Yeah, East Hampton had number three, Tyler Darling, planting it in front of the net. And as we're watching the play, all of a sudden you see the stick hit the netting. <laughs> That's the roof fell out of the, the sky there. So, yeah, I mean, he really slammed that, that uh, stick out of his hands. Yeah. So now we have a five on three for 36 seconds. Face off to the right of Riley Drew. Greenfield trails 1 0, and now they are down two men. It's a five on three power play advantage. Golden opportunity for East Hampton to widen this lead. The only good news for Greenfield is Fusual is on the bench right now. Draw controlled by Greenfield, and Kevin Bauman slams it out. So it's five on three situation for another 30 seconds for East Hampton. The Eagles now coming up the board, coming up the center of the ice by the Galfin now. Ahead, dumped in, behind the net. Bauman after it. Bauman tries to clear, it's blocked. And now they finally clear the zone. Tough play by uh, number 13 on East Hampton. He was on the other side of the blue line. Without, couldn't keep it in. Was in the wrong spot. Greenfield will get back one player right now as back out onto the ice is Roach. And now a whistle and we've got a cross check. And this is going to be on East Hampton on Tyler Darling, so he'll go to the box. Actually, going to have, going to have matching penalties, it looks like. No, nope. or is Bauman going to ask? No, it's, it looks like it's just going to be on Tyler Darling. Yeah, what Bauman's asking is, why wasn't that hitting from behind? Because hitting from behind, I believe, would send him to the locker room. For the game, right? For the game. Yeah. So by doing a cross-check, he stays in the game with just a two-minute penalty. And now the teams will be four on four for minute 21 at Greenfield. In the next period, we'll have a short 40-second power play. 104 to go in period number one. one nothing. Greenfield trails. And now it's a four-on-four -four situation. 121 left to go on the Greenfield penalty, as Todd said, in two minutes now on the penalty for East Hampton. Faceoff will be to the right of Jaden Darling. It'll be Bauman out there on the draw for the wave. Brian Bauman. And draw controlled by East Hampton. Clearing pass, not out. Now a steal, down low. Oh, and he could not get the shot off as Barnes nearly picked his pocket. Now this is Delisle now. Dumps it back behind Drew. After it's McGoldrick, McGoldrick over skates. Puck behind the net, centering pass in the slot. Backhanded to the boards and out of the zone by Bauman. And now this is Kevin Bauman up the left side. Ahead to Barnes. Barnes 
back to Kevin. And it goes down into the corner. 26 seconds to go in the period. And they temp it all the way back to Brian Bauman at their own blue line. Now here comes Brian up the right side. Brian Bauman getting some speed on the right wing side. Goes into the corner. Pins it against the board. Still has it. Swings it out. Trying to fake the stuff. Turn around. Shot blocked. Bauman still after it on the four check. Now Kevin comes up to pinch to try to help out. And it's clear out of the zone. And that will end the first period of play from Collins Boylan Arena. We played one period on Hockey Night in Greenfield. At the end of one, it's East Hampton one, Greenfield nothing. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield, brought to you by Gilmore and Farrell Insurance. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Extreme Networks, customer-driven networking for your business. Software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure. ExtremeNetworks.com Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. Webbs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in the center of South Deerfield. Our studio producer is Dave Reno, Hockey Night in Greenfield. Also want to give you a shout out to the crew from Frontier Community Access Television who's here. They are recording this game. You'll be able to watch this game in its entirety on demand at the FCAT Media YouTube page at youtube.com and that will be up and posted probably within 24 to 48 hours right now we still got a lot more hockey to play here Todd Howe we've got 30 more minutes of on ice action and what happens in the event of a tie at the high school level a tie is a tie a tie oh. is a tie it's like kissing your sister we don't like that well, let's not go there whatever happened to shootouts <laughs> <laughs> they didn't last in college hockey either yeah well the only time you'd see overtime would be in the postseason and, of course, the postseason is somewhat of a sore subject for Greenfield after having been bounced last year by Belchertown. They would love to bring home a championship this year. And I think they got the, they got the horses to do it if things break their way. I really do, too, think that. Uh, I think they can go back to when they won it back in 08, when it was the first year of the D3A playoffs. And we really have an interesting, interesting time here. We're going to start this period off at 4-on-4. Four four. East Hampton will have a guy in the box for 57 seconds. Greenfield... Bryant will be released in 18 seconds. Really important face-off. If Greenfield can win this face-off and almost drag the puck back into their zone, don't try and be offensive and maybe sneak Bryant out and get a, get a breakaway for him or have him join the play as they go in. I'll be curious to see the line changes and if Bouchard shakes things up a little bit more. Bauman and O'Sullivan, I think, would be the power line. But I think, you know, Lenoy and Barnes have skated well, I think. Barnes has had a couple of good opportunities. Yeah. At, uh, at some open ice. Yeah, both Lenoise and Barnes have played well. Lenoise had a, a great tip that just went wide. That was probably their best scoring opportunity. And Barnes has done a good job bringing the puck deep into the zone. Tyler Darling is in the box for East Hampton. And as you mentioned, Bryant will be in the bench for the penalty bench for Greenfield. Four on four to start this period. They bring out Bauman and O'Sullivan as the two lead forwards for Greenfield. And Aiden Roach is out there on defense along with Bowie Harris. Now they're going to bring up Roach to the left wing as they'll face it off at center ice. Period number two are playing four on four for a couple of seconds anyway. 14 seconds to be exact. Harris now back with it in zone end. Swings behind the net. Backhands it up to Bauma on the left wing, or right wing boards. Bauman head to O'Sullivan. Back out. Gets it from Bauman now. Bauman now. Crosses the blue line. Bauman tries the toe drag. Broken up. O'Sullivan now slides it in front. It goes across to the far boards. And taken away by Fugio. And dumped in by, by Sullivan. 25 seconds left to go on the man advantage for Greenfield. Bryant now out of the box. Swings the net. Bryant up the left wing. Bryant moving ahead. Into East 10th in territory. Loses control. It goes to the far boards. And battle for it behind O'Sullivan. 
bumping back there with Delisle. Puck slides in front, and it's cleared up. Up ahead to Fugio. Fugio gets bumped by Bryant coming through center ice, broken up. Bauman now with it. Bauman on the left wing has O'Sullivan in the middle. Circles back, turnaround shot blocked in front, and it's backhanded out to center ice. Bauman just didn't see O'Sullivan sneak behind the defense when he was wide open in front, but Bauman took it backwards and took a slap shot. Roach now into the corner with it, falls down. O'Sullivan behind the net. O'Sullivan has Barnes in front. O'Sullivan turns, shoots, blocked in front, and the puck is forced to the right side and cleared out by East Hampton. Now to four check is Matt Sullivan. Puck is knocked loose and it is poked to the far boards. And Greenfield trying to clear up the boards, but not quite out. And they backhanded up the wall to O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan in the center. Wrist shot deflected wide of the net. That's a good bid for Greenfield here. And Puck pushed to the far boards. And McCulloch comes back the other way. And loses control. And gets knocked in behind the Greenfield net. Barnes on a four check after it. They clear it up the right side. Batman pinches, keeps it in. Puck loose in the high slot. And forced to the far boards by Clock and out of the zone. This is going to be icing. and they'll bring it down and face it off with 12.41 to go in period two. Greenfield started this period off just the way they wanted. They're dominating play again. They haven't got many solid shots off, but they've had the opportunities. There's a couple of nice plays of getting the trailer in the slot and getting a shot off. But East Hampton is really piling up the bodies in front of the goaltender, making it tough to get through. Barnes, Lenoy, and Prusak to line out there for Greenfield. Face off to the right of the East Hampton net. And Puck goes into the corner. Battle for it on the far boards. And poked up and cleared out of the zone by East Hampton. Two on one break. In the slot, shot, saved by Riley Drew. That was a nice play. Fusil beat the Greenfield defenseman, had a two on one, made a great play across the slot. Drew again went down, and his glove saved him. The guy went for the upper corner. So I think he's Hampton thinks he goes down a lot, and he doesn't have a good glove, and, and they're half right. He goes down a lot. He does have a good glove, though. Well, absolutely. Face off to the right of Riley Drew, 12 26 to go, second period. East Hampton. Leading 1-0, very nearly went up two there with that. Nice stop by Riley Drew, though, to keep it a one-goal game. Fugel, back to the point to Gelfin. Gelfin backhanded into the corner. After it's Pollen behind the net. Pollen battling. And the puck slides in front. Back to the point. Wrist shot. Score! As again, they roofed it. And it's 2-0 East Hampton on the wrister from the right point. It's like we've been saying the whole game that Facing Drew, that upper right-hand corner is what they're shooting for. On this play, East Hampton actually tried to get it to a guy closer to the net in the slot, but a good defensive play passed it through, went back to the defenseman. The defenseman, just a wrist shot, but it was hard, and I think Drew didn't see the whole time. I don't think he saw it. I think it looked like it was partially screened. Anyway, East Hampton goes up 2-0 on Greenfield on the wrister from the point. So the Waves got some work to do. Down two, middle part of the second period here from Collins Boyle Arena. Greenfield just can't get frustrated. They're getting the opportunities and just not getting through to the net. And once they start getting through to the net, we'll test this goaltender and see how good Darling is. He's played well. You can't say anything. It's uh, almost halfway through the game. He hasn't given up any goals, and he's faced a dozen shots at least. Face off at the blue line. The puck deflected into the East Hampton bench, so that's where they'll face it off. Draw goes back and is sent into the Greenfield end of the rink. Back after it's Kevin Bauman. Bauman loses control behind the net. Battle for it. And here comes the wave. Three on two. Three on two break. This is O'Sullivan on the right side. Centering pass, shot by Bauman, is blocked in front. And skated out by Delisle. East Hampton is doing a great job filling the lanes. They're just un not able to get the puck through to the goaltender. Delisle now with it. Delisle, wrist shot. Gloved the side by Drew. Puck into the far corner in the greenfield end. And O'Sullivan now backhands it up ahead. Trying to break through is Roach. He's broken up. And East Hampton skates it back out. And they're going to dump it in. East Hampton's going to get a line change. Harris now goes back after it behind the net. O'Sullivan now gets a pass. Skates it up center right. Sean O'Sullivan getting some speed. O'Sullivan crosses the blue line. O'Sullivan breaks in. Shot a save 
by Darling. That goes behind the net, and centering pass is not cleared, though. O'Sullivan now, shot just wide of the net. That might have hit the crossbar or the top of the goaltender's stick. Now Bryant behind the net. Bryant tries to stuff, and it's cleared up, but now out. Lead pass ahead after it is Sullivan. Matt Sullivan tries to slide it in front, goes cross ice and out of the zone. And the puck now in front of the Greenfield bench. Illinois battling for it. Cross ice pass goes in front of the penalty box. And Sullivan slams it back in behind Drew. 10-18 to go in the second period. Greenfield down 2-0 to East Hampton. As they try to clear and a whistle. And this is going to be a hook is going to be the call. So East Hampton, Darren Fugel gets called for the hook. It's going to be a power play for the Wave. If Greenfield wants to get back in the game, I can guarantee you everyone on that bench is, you know what, we need a power play, we need it on Fugel. So now they've got their best player in the box. They've got a five on four for two minutes, and this is their chance to cut the lead in half. Face off will be to the left of Jaden Darling, 10-12 to go in period two. And Greenfield with a power play and the best player on the East Hampton team, Fugel, is in the bat, in the penalty box. Draw one by Greenfield. The top of the circle, shot deflected by Roach. Goes to the far board, Sullivan. O'Sullivan is after it. Kept out, kept in though. Bryant now, wrist shot. Hit the back of the net, or the back of the, the uh, glass rather. Rebound controlled by Bauman. Back to the point to Harris. Harris to Bauman. Greenfield setting up the power play. Harris now with it. Far side, tries to backhand it. And it's cleared up and out by East Hampton as Harris has got taken off the puck. Callahan slams it down to Drew. As we talked about before the game, they're doing this moving umbrella, but unfortunately for them, East Hampton's keeping two guys high. They're not gonna be able to continue to do that unless they get those guys suckered down into the corner. O'Sullivan crosses the blue line. O'Sullivan, top of the slot, looking for Bauman, and the pass was behind him and cleared out by East Hampton. That was a tough break as Bauman was right there, ready to pull the trigger. Roach now skates it up for Greenfield. Roach into East Hampton territory. Roach into the corner, stops, pulls it back. Roach. Back to the point, to Bryant, Bryant, wrist shot, save! Second shot, Oh! hit the crossbar! It deflected off of eight of East Hampton, Jake Delisle, then off the crossbar. Shot save, as Darling is able to cover it up, as Bauman let it go from the top of the slot. So Greenfield, a couple of good bids there. Three solid opportunities, off of eight, off the crossbar, into the corner. A couple players from East Hampton come out, they go right to the goalie, congratulate him, and said, thanks for keeping us ahead in this game. Yeah, I think Garland got lucky on that one. He didn't use the stick, he used the pad, and just got a pad on it. And Greenfield's getting more scoring opportunities because they're going to the net, they're try not trying to shoot through people. Barnes now, behind the net with it. Barnes circles back to the near side boards. Barnes now, back to the point. McColdrick, slap shot, save by Darling as he gloves it and covers it up. As Mikey McGoldrick can let it go from there. There was no one between McGoldrick and the goaltender, Darling. He saw it the whole way. He just had to get some people in there. It's the first time East Hampton didn't throw three bodies in front of it, which was unfortunate on that slap shot. Face off to the left of Jaden Darling. 28 seconds to go on the man advantage. Greenfield has got a good power play here. At least four good scoring opportunities. McGoldrick now bounces it back ahead. Now Barnes with it. Barnes swings the net. Barnes still with it. Goes to the far side board, bounces it back to Kevin Bauman, back to Barnes. At the circle, Barnes with it now, circling back around. Back to Bauman, Kevin with it. Kevin, wrist shot, save, gloved by Darling as he gloved it as it was rolling on the ice. Pretty unusual way to make that save. Yeah, and honestly, I think Greenfield was trying to do that a lot. In hockey, if you can hit that hard shot low, nine times out of ten it's hitting a goalie's pad and coming out for a good rebound. And that time... Darling was able to just grab it right off the ice. Three seconds left to go on the man advantage. 8.15 to go in the period. Face off to the right of Darling. Back to the point. Bryant now with it. Bryant snaps it. Shut just wide of the net. Harris now slams it back into the corner. Now Bauman comes out with it. Bauman backhander saved by Darling. What a play by Bauman. Oh, what a save by Darling. Darling answer was a great play. Right in front of giving Oh, right in the crease. Shot. Score! Aiden Roach was camped down low. For the centering pass, it's 2-1. It was almost a misdirection play. Greenfield was going to someone else in front, and the puck just slowly went through. It was like slow motion. And Roach was there and popped it off the goaltender. He still, Darling still got his pad on it. It hit the pad, went in the upper corner. Aiden Roach right where he needed to be camped. 
down low and it's 2-1. Greenfield is on the board with 7.54 to go in the second period. Halfway through the contest and now we have a new game. Face off at center ice. Greenfield lights the lamp. East Hampton wins the draw. Headman pass for Reynolds. Shoots it in, Riley Drew will hang on and cover. And the faceoff will be to his left with 7.47 to go in the second period. Smart play by Drew, no one was around him. It gives Greenfield the opportunity to change their lines, match up better with uh, what East Hampton has out there. So Aiden Roach gets Greenfield on the board. Greenfield wins the draw. And here come the wave. Up the right side. This is Barnes. Barnes slides in front. Puck is right there on the doorstep where they couldn't get a shot off. And East Hampton clears. Nice play by Barnes. He won the face off. Took the puck all the way down the other zone and made a sweet pass in front. Just couldn't finish. Puck goes back to the Greenfield blue line. Pushed up ahead. And slammed back in by Liam Reynolds. Goes behind the Greenfield net. Wave now, setting it back up. Barnes, headman pass. Looking to set up Lenoy, skips over his stick. Backhanded up, and not quite out. Now here's a steal, top of the slot. And Prusak could not get his shot off. Puck slammed around the net. Barnes now on the right wing boards. Bumped off the puck, and cleared out by East Hampton. Oh, what a hit! Oh my goodness, Brian Bauman just leveled Marowitz right in front of the East Hampton bench. How do you do? Welcome to Greenfield. Marowitz right off the ice after that. I don't think he's hurt, but after that I think a break would be uh, well received. Bauman now after it. O'Sullivan's there in front of the Greenfield bench. Puck is jammed loose and forced to the far boards. And Delisle takes a hit as the hitting is picking up here. Sometimes all it takes is that first big hit and you change the whole tone of the game and that's happened so far. Let's see if it continues. O'Sullivan now with a headman pass. Pushes it into East Hampton territory. Spins after it. O'Sullivan rams the East Hampton player behind the net. Bauman back there bumping around. Play getting very physical right now here in the later stages of the second period. The game has changed. It's, it's unbelievable how we went from hardly any hitting, maybe one hit in the first half of the game and now everybody's getting hit. Push up ahead. Bauman now with it. This is Brian up the right side. Bauman at the circle. Bauman trying to work on the defenseman. O'Sullivan comes over, bumps him loose. Now Bauman goes behind the net looking for O'Sullivan. And Karam is back out in front and forced to the boards by the Eagles. Another big hit in front of us by Aiden Roach, who scored Greenfield's goal as the physical play has really picked up here late going. All of a sudden, we're playing old school hockey. Puck ends up deflecting off the Greenfield bench. 6.25 to go in the second period. And now this is, it feels like a hockey game, Todd Howe. <laughs> yeah, it feels like they woke up. I think they woke up the whole crowd, too. We'll see if it continues on this shift. It was a single shift thing, but uh, we saw more hits in that shift than we've seen the whole game. I agree. Face off to the right of Darling. Barnes is out there. And the referee talking with the East Hampton bench. I think it, the East Hampton bench wanted a penalty on that big hit. And now we've got, I don't know what's going on here. Referee's talking to the... I'm not sure what the argument is, but the official scorer is talking to the ref, and now we're ready to go. Yeah, they did make a slight adjustment to the clock, so they must have been letting the clock run after the whistle was blown. Sammy Knight's out there on the right wing, along with Barnes. And slammed down behind the net. Knight now after it. Knight the freshman. Working it behind the net. Centering pass. Quick shot blocked in front. Puck is still loose on the doorstep. Turnaround shot blocked in front. And back to the point it goes McGoldrick. Tries to dump it back in and it's clear back out by East Hampton. Skips over McGoldrick's stick. Back to get it is Jake Bryant. Bryant now up the right wing boards looking for Knight. And it's dumped back in to the Greenfield end of the rink. McCulrick now back after it. One of four captains on this Greenfield team. Headman pass. Looking for Knight. Skips over his stick. Puck in front of the penalty bench. Whistle. And offside. Offside is the call. So we'll get a line change. Face off. We'll be at the blue line of Greenfield. 
5.37 to go in the second period. Fugio back out there centering. I haven't seen him in a little while. I know he had the penalty, but he really didn't stand out in the play. I'm not sure if he was even on the ice. Bauman and O'Sullivan come out on their line. Puck goes back to Kevin Bauman. Bauman pushes up ahead to O'Sullivan. Tip pass to Bauman out at center ice. Now ending up with it is Aiden Roach. Roach now. Roach. Shot goes behind the net. Go to the far boards. Harris comes in, tries to backhand it. Can't. Skips over a stick. Bauman will start it back up at center ice. Cross ice pass to Roach. And now Fugil over there. Puck is now at center ice. Bauman now. Two on two with O'Sullivan as the trailer. Drops it back. Now Roach has it. Roach at the dot. Shot just wide of the net. Puck comes around. Harris now with it. Backhands it on the far boards. Harris keeps it in, but only temporarily as it skips out of the zone. O'Sullivan now. Cycles back up the left wing. O'Sullivan to Bauman. Bauman now. Left wing boards. Back to the point to Harris. Harris lets one go. Deflected. Puck loose in front. Roach with a shot, and it's covered up by Darling as Roach almost tailed number two there. That was another great play. The wing had a decision. He could either bring it in deep or go back to the point. He went back to the point. They had a solid shot. And then again, there's just so many East Hampton bodies between the defenseman and the net. It's just bouncing off like a pinball. And that one almost fell in the right spot. Face off to the left of Darling. 4.46 to go in the second period. 2-1 East Hampton. The Barnes line is back out there with Prusak and Delnoy. Prusak now has it behind the net. Prusak swings the cage, being bumped off the puck. Over to help out as Illinois. Prusak comes away with it. Turn around, shot, tough angle. Is stopped by Darling and covered. Face off will be to his right. Darling was ready for that one. He was already down. Wasn't expecting a shot. He was trying to protect him from coming around the net and just wrapping around, putting in the net. So he was Prusak. ready for that shot. Back to the point. Shot wide. Uh, sliding pass in front. Jacob Bryant's shot is blocked on the pass from Lenoy. Prusak battling for it on the far boards, and it's clear. Bryant now has it. Bryant cycles back to his own blue line, dicks it back to Pollen. Pollen getting away from a pursuit. Now Pollen up ahead to Barnes. Barnes looking to feed Prusak, or rather Lenoy. Now Lenoy. Now Prusak has it. High slot. Prusak in. Backhander. Save. Shot. Score! As Barnes was there. Megan Lenoy. And it's 2-2. What a great play by Barnes. He took the puck. Had a two-on-one, kept it himself, took a backhand shot on Drew. The puck went straight up in the air, and Lenoise was there to knock it out of the air, into the net, and tie this game up with just over four minutes left. Derek Lenoy was camped. Great setup by Prusak and Barnes, and we are tied at two with 4.02 to go in period number two. So the wave is alive. Faceoff goes all the way down to the East Hampton end. O'Sullivan after it behind that. O'Sullivan trying to side it in front, blocked in front. As right now, East Hampton looks dead tired. And they'll ice it. No icing, though. Drew will bounce it up the boards. Bowman is after it. Ahead to O'Sullivan, skips over a stick. O'Sullivan still with it. O'Sullivan on the right wing. Drops it back to Roach. Roach on the right wing board. Spins away, Roach. Slides it in front, puck loose. Bauman after it, it's covered by Darling. Oh, I'll tell you, that was close. Another solid opportunity. And this really is what I was told prior to the game, that Greenfield just had a little trouble getting that puck into the net. They've outplayed these guys, they've outshot these guys. But Drew's keeping them in the game at this point, and they're getting a lot more opportunities now that they're willing to go deeper into the zone. Darling has been peppered in the second period. Face off to his right. Back to the point. Wrist shot. High and wide of the net. Dump back in behind. Bauman now after it. That's Brian. Brian and to Sullivan high slot. Shot high, knocked down by Darling. Fat rebound. And it goes loose and is cleared out by East Hampton. Headman pass. This is Matt Sullivan. Wrist shot. Saved by Drew. Goes wide to the net. Big hit on the far boards. Puck is still loose. Out in front. Shot. Saved by Drew. And East Greenfield's able to clear it out. Up ahead. This is O'Sullivan trying to bear through. Gets elbowed on the way through, no call. He took an elbow right to the head. Now Bauman tripped at the blue line. Bauman with it. Bauman spun around. Oh, what an elbow! Penalty coming up! That was flagrant! 
And going away is going to be Jake Delisle. He hit him with a forearm shiver. And Mikey McColdrick popped back up. That is an obvious two minutes and could be more. What an elbow. That was definitely a hard hit. The hardest hit we've seen now. And he's really put his team in a tough spot. There's two and a half minutes left. He's in the box for two minutes, so Greenfield will have a power play for almost the rest of this period. With an elbow like that, he should be wearing a Charlestown Chiefs jersey. That was unbelievable. Right in the high slot. Golden opportunity for Greenfield. As the Kyle Barnes line is out there on the power play. McColdrick on defense, along with Bauman. McColdrick now with it. On the right wing boards. McColdrick slides it. Tough angle shot save. Fat rebound again and cleared out. There's been a couple of really fat rebounds by Darling in this period. Yeah, Greenfield has their second power play unit out on the ice right now. And they have an opportunity right here with a two on two. Here comes Barnes. Barnes, high slot shot saved by Darling and covered as he unleashed it. Now some bumping in front of Darling. 134 to go in the man advantage. 205 to go in the period. Advantage Greenfield, Todd Howe. Absolutely, and Darling, I think if he had time to think about it, he would, he would have pushed that buck in the corner because now the first power play unit for Greenfield comes out. Face off to the right of Darling, and it's going to be Roach, Bauman, and O'Sullivan. Face off goes right to Darling. He covers it back up. Smart play. As suddenly we are tied at two. Greenfield with a man advantage. Courtesy of the elbow slash forearm shiver by Jake Delisle. Puck is battled for and falling on it. And they're going to whistle it. Very nearly a delay of game penalty there. Yeah, the centerman, uh, Fugier, actually went down, grabbed the puck with his hand as a centerman. That's sometimes a penalty. It's yeah, a penalty I'm at the college level, but these two guys are not calling it. Face off to the right of Darling again. Bauman on the draw. And cleared up and out by East Hampton. Harris is back to get it. Bowie Harris, the senior out of Mahar Regional School, behind his own net. Leaves it for Bauman. Bauman swings it up the center of the ice. Head man to O'Sullivan, left wing. O'Sullivan at the circle. O'Sullivan swings behind and loses control of it. Bauman gets it back, back to the point. Shot from the point, high, blocked in front, puck loose. And covered by Jaden Darling as Harris' shot went high and they'll face it off. Nice play by Darling there. The puck was, was higher, probably over his head, but he knocked it down right in front of the net. Two Greenfield guys, two East Hampton guys skated right by it. He dove on it. Bauman on the draw for Greenfield. Puck goes into the corner after it's O'Sullivan. Bauman now back to the point to Harris. Back to Bauman. Bauman to Bryant. Bryant with a wrist shot through a crowd. Save by Darling as he has been peppered in this period. I'd like to see Greenfield on the power play. When they get that puck back to Bryant, the two wingers just got to crash the net, get their sticks in the way, cause some confusion. Because right now, Drew's been seeing those pucks from the D with no one in front of them. Draw one by East Hampton. They cleared out of the zone all the way down to Drew. Back to get it is Harris. Harris loses the puck behind the net. Stolen. Shot from a weird angle. And face off will be to the left of Drew as he clubbed it. You don't want to have that happen. That was a nice play by Fusial. Greenfield has been going down. They've been setting up behind their own net on this power play. Fusier was close enough, and he said, I'm going to try it. And he went behind there and stole it. They're lucky he stumbled a little bit, or he would have had a clear shot on net. And that was another good save by, uh, by Drew. With it. Again, he went down, and the glove went up, and he made a great save. Face off to the left of Riley Drew. One by Greenfield. 33 seconds left to go on the man advantage. One minute to go in the period. And here comes Greenfield, up the left side. Sliding behind the net. Stop! Centering pass blocked in front. Back to the point. McColdrick now loses control of it. Stolen away by Matt Sullivan. And Sullivan comes back. And McColdrick goes back to get it. Ten seconds to go in the power play. McColdrick now. Headman pass. Up ahead to Barnes. Behind him. Barnes now with it. Right wing. Barnes. Wrist shot. Gloved again by, Sullivan, by uh, Darling. He hangs on to it. Penalty is over, 27 seconds to go in the period. Two good plays on both ends there. 
I thought on the defensive end, Kevin Bauman for Greenfield, one-on-one, -on -one, it took the body. Let the guy come back and take the puck. And then Barnes, again, has been carrying that puck in his own so strong that he's getting opportunities. And if he can get that into the slot, we have another chance. Bauman, O'Sullivan out there along with Roach. Draw goes to the corner. And Kevin Bauman dumps it back in. This is going to be an offside. They're going to have to clear the zone. 18 seconds to go in the period. And he's tempting with it now. And they're going to swing behind their own net, try and kill off the last 10 seconds of this period. And unable to clear the zone, though. O'Sullivan with it. O'Sullivan. Now it clears the zone, and that will do it in period number two. But we have a brand new hockey game. We are all tied at two at the end of two periods. We played two periods from Collins Boyle Arena at the end of two. We're all tied up at two. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield, brought to you by Gilmore and Farrell Insurance. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Extreme Networks, customer-driven networking for your business, software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure, extremenetworks.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. Webbs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials across from the Common in the center of South Deerfield. Chris Collins, Todd Howe, our studio producer is Dave Reno. Third frame up coming. East Hampton Eagles are on the bench waiting to come out for the second period. Greenfield has yet to emerge. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield brought to you by Gilmore and Farrell Insurance. And it's been a lot of fun. A lot of memories in this old building. And I was thinking about this today. As I was reflecting on this game, it's been a long time since I've been on this ice. But whenever I walk into this building, it's like there's that feel, you know what I mean? And uh, it, I don't want to get too uh, too weird about it, but it's just there's something that will always be special. And I know you feel it too, having played on this surface as a hockey player for the high school, but also we all both came up in the FCHA, and we know what it's like playing hockey for in front of the home fans in Greenfield. Nothing quite like it. Yeah, the history of hockey in Massachusetts, you know, once Bob York went on the Bruins, that changed hockey. Rinks were being built in all the counties, and that's really what happened here. And, and really the, uh, the driving force of your two parents helped make Frank County Hockey what it is today. Well, it wasn't just my, I mean, my parents were a big part of it, but your parents, a lot of parents, and we lost some good people this year that were part of this, um, you know, part of the sort of the old guard, the regime that mm -hmm. began hockey in Greenfield, and it's continued for years and uh, continues to flourish. And, and we talk about a lot of stuff at the expense of the game, and you know, but still, to have this kind of a quality team from the entire county is really a legacy, I think, for those early years, and continues to be. And we're thrilled to be able to bring you part of the regular season for a long time, we've wanted to do this and we just haven't had the opportunity, but now we've got the opportunity and we're glad to be able to, to be here and looking forward to hopefully following this Greenfield team all the way to a Western Mass Championship. Yeah, what I like now, I know some people, like you said, old school, don't like the cooperative teams, but it's kind of nice to see the Franklin County players become the Franklin County team, become the high school team. When I played in high school, if you, had, if you were from Turner's Falls or you went to Frontier, your hockey career usually ended when you became a sophomore. Unless you were in the Bantams or you played for the Springfield Olympics. Beyond that, yep. you didn't have an opportunity. I, I, I agree. I think it's kind of uh, the majority of the kids on this team are from Frontier, which is surprising to me. Uh, but you got Frontier, Greenfield, Franklin Tech, Athol, Mahar, all represented. And likewise for East Hampton, you got North Hampton, Hampshire Regional, and East Hampton. So, And it, the numbers are up. I mean, for right. years, the Greenfield team had 12 players. Right. Exactly. Now they have a JV team. It's a good thing, and it bodes well for the future. So here we go, third period, anybody's hockey game, although it would appear, based on that second period, that Greenfield has the advantage. And it's going to be the Bauman line that starts out this period. 
Bauman centering O'Sullivan and Roach. With Harris and Bryant on defense for the wave. And now, now we're ready to go. And they're going to have O'Sullivan on the draw. Puck into East 10th territory, but pushed back out and dumped back in on Drew. Drew will hold on to it. He will cover it with an East 10th player zooming in and will face it off to his left to start this period. This is a good opportunity for East Canton. They get the puck deep in the zone. They got a face off on D. They get John Callahan. If Ugil can get that puck back, expect a quick shot. Face off to the left of Drew. Forced to the boards. And Bryant now with it. Bryant up ahead. Bumping with Fugil. Now Bryant goes behind the net. And O'Sullivan. Backhands it up ahead to Roach. Roach blocked off by the East Hampton defenseman. Roach gets it back, though, at the blue line and forces it into East Hampton territory. Cleared back out, though, quickly. And back to get it is Harris in his own end. Harris. Right wing pass to O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan now. High slot. O'Sullivan goes left side into the corner. O'Sullivan behind the net. Cycling. O'Sullivan in a high slot. O'Sullivan still with it. Whipping around. Backhands it across ice. Bauman now is shot blocked in front by East Hampton. From the point, shot save. Forced to the boards. And cleared out by East Hampton. Bryant back to get it in his own end. Jake Bryant swings behind his own net. Up the left wing. Cleared up but not out. Kept in by East Hampton. Slides it in front. Bauman now takes it. Looking to feed Barnes. Now Bauman up ahead. Bauman shot. Wider than it, rebound comes off the boards and covered smartly by Darling. They'll face it off to his left. Right now, the East Hampton defense are playing a little tentative. They're giving Greenfield a lot of room from the blue line. Greenfield's been able to bring it in, and the defense are already at the top of the circles. Face off to the left of Darling. Barnes on the draw. Trying to knock it loose. Barnes now behind the net. Barnes still with it. Slide it in front, goes cross ice. McGoldrick now backhands it into East Hampton behind the net. On a four check is Lenoy. Lenoy is over there, also Pruick. And a shot on net, save by Darling, and he'll cover it up. Again, another situation where uh, Darling was able to see a shot all the way from the blue line, no one in front of him, as both teams look like they're going to be changing up. Quick line change for Greenfield. And they're going to bring out the first unit, Bowman, O'Sullivan, and Roach. And Harris and Pollen on defense. Off the draw. Goes into the corner. East Hampton bangs it up the boards. Not cleared out, though, as Pollen throws it back in. But now cleared up and into the Greenfield Terrace, into the building by East Hampton. Puck goes to the far boards. O'Sullivan after it. O'Sullivan. Tries to skate it out ahead to Bauman. Bauman ahead to Roach. Left side. Roach with it. Trying to slide it in front. Broken up. Here comes East Hampton the other way. Three on two break. At the dot. Shot goes wide of Riley Drew. Rebound goes far boards. Bauman clears it up and out. O'Sullivan now. O'Sullivan with Bauman. He's got Roach in the center to Bauman. High slot. Bauman. Rich shot. Score! Brian Bauman! Upper corner. And Greenfield takes the lead 3-2. The East Hampton defense now were so concerned about Greenfield going past them or around them that they're giving such a cushion that that was a soft three on two. They played in the slot. He took all day and he fired it past Darlin. Absolutely labeled by Brian Bauman. And just like that, Greenfield takes its first lead 3 2 with 12.31 to go in the hockey game. I mentioned earlier that I thought Greenfield was going to match up against the Fusio line. You're going to definitely see it now with a one goal lead. Barnes. And Lenoy out there, along with Prusak, the second unit. And East Hampton now with it. On a four check. This is Sullivan. Shot from the center of the slot, blocked. Goes to the far boards, and Prusak skates it out. Dumping it in behind the net. Prusak with it on a four check. Comes around, back to the point. To Bauman. Bauman up ahead to Lenoy. Lenoy on the right wing board. Backhands it to Barnes. 
Illinois comes back to help out, back to the point. Wrist shot, save in front. Rebound controlled by Greenfield. Centering pass blocked. Illinois with it now, Illinois behind the net. Illinois skating around, Greenfield getting lots of room to move with the puck here. Back down low to Barnes, centering pass goes all the way down to Riley Drew. East Hampton's uh, satisfied by playing that box at one and letting Greenfield play on the outsides. Barnes gets knocked down. Now Bauman with it. Bauman, headman pass to O'Sullivan, score! O'Sullivan goes stick side, and it's 4-2 Greenfield. I hope he gets assist on this because Kyle Barnes made that play in the wing. He took the defenseman down on the play. Bauman came in and made a great pass to O'Sullivan, and Greenfield's now opened it up with four unanswered goals. And Greenfield skating around the East Hampton end with the puck almost untouched. And there have been a couple of times where they've circled the net three or four times. That time, O'Sullivan was just camped. Nobody touched him. So Greenfield opens up a quick two-goal lead with 11.20 to go in the game. Off the draw. Centering pass by Roach goes all the way around the other side. O'Sullivan tries to knock it loose. And East Hampton with it. And they head man it up to Matt Sullivan. Broken up. And East Hampton now with it. Delisle now. Up ahead, Delisle tries to slide it in front. He does. Quick shot saved by Drew. Rebound backhander blocked. Second shot blocked. As Fugil is after it behind the net. A couple of good bids there for East Hampton. O'Sullivan now on the far boards. Goes cross ice to Roach. Aiden Roach now one on two. Roach up the left side. Shot deflected up and out of the rink. They'll face it off with 10.31 to go in period three. We have a new game here. It'll be interesting to see if East Hampton is able to change their pace of play. They have to be more aggressive in the defensive zone and they have to be more aggressive in the offensive zone. They don't have the same ability to skate in the corners and not get hit. Greenfield's taking them in the corners. It looks like East Hampton might be a little tired right now, Todd. They're, they're really not, they don't have a lot of jump in their step, it seems. They're a short staff. They got 14 players on the bench and I'm looking over them now. Most of their heads are down, gasping for air. Pruzak behind the net with it for Greenfield. Pruzak, again, he's been wheeling around the zone almost untouched in the second, this third period. Centering pass, shot, save! As a bang, bang shot there by Barnes. Blocked nicely by Darling and cleared back out. This is going to be icing. So we'll bring it down and face it off with 10 12 to go in the game. Greenfield with a two goal lead. Greenfield's really having their way in the offensive zone. They're just able to control that puck as long as they're keeping on the outside. And if they keep moving and cycling, they're finding those lanes and they're getting some good quality scoring opportunities. Face off to the right, Darling. Barnes on the draw for Greenfield. Barnes with it now. Turns away, Pruzak with it at the dot. Pruzak shot, tough angle. Barnes gets the rebound behind it. This is almost like a power play right now we're seeing. Barnes down low to Lenoy. Lenoy slides it in front. And it's knocked up ahead and finally cleared by East Hampton. Headman pass to Delisle. Delisle is broken up. MJ Pollen now behind the net. MJ Pollen up ahead to Pruzak. Pruzak. On a right wing four check, three on two, Pruzak shot, score! Five hole, that one had eyes, and it's 5-2 Greenfield. When Pruzak let go of that puck, it looked like an innocent shot going on net. Darling went down, and he didn't use a stick. Remember, if you remember a couple times, he caught some of those low shots with his glove. Well, he missed that one, that one goes right between his legs, and then we now have a 5-2 game. Five unanswered goals by the wave. Pruzak lights the lamp. Shane Pruzak, the freshman from Frontier. And it's 5-2 Greenfield with less than 10 minutes, 9.37, to play in this one. Greenfield's got to be happy with the Illinois, Barnes, and Pruzak line. They've played well tonight. They haven't scored every goal, but they've kept the play in the offensive zone. Bauman now on a four check. Knocks it into the East Hampton end behind the net. Gets knocked down for his trouble. O'Sullivan over to help out. And they're going to whistle it dead as... Bauman fell on it. Bauman slow to get up, but I don't, I don't think he's hurt, but he went down pretty. They have to face off this, this face off outside the zone, though. It's outside the zone because Bauman was the one sitting on the right. puck. Bauman on the draw for Greenfield. Been all wave since the middle part of the second period, really. Puck forced into the East Hampton zone. 
O'Sullivan on the four check. Bauman now with it. Bauman behind the net. Bauman slides around. Bauman with the stuff. Did not go in. Puck comes back behind the net. And Delisle will take it up. That man pass out of the zone. And Roach now. Roach wheels down the right wing into East Hampton territory. Behind the net. Roach battling for it. Digging. Centering pass on the doorstep. Bauman now has it. Bauman back to the point. McColdrick. McColdrick with a wrist shot blocked in front. And skated out by East Hampton. This is Fugil. Fugil in on Drew. Save. Rebound knocked behind the net. Good bid by Fugil. Delisle after it now on the right wing board. Bumping with Bryant. Bryant swings it around the net. To the far boards. O'Sullivan after it. O'Sullivan up ahead to Bauman. Brian Bauman. One on two. Bauman works his way through. Runs into the goalkeeper. Net dislodged. And they'll face it off as Bauman was burying and looking for his second tally of the game. Again, they're going to bring the face off outside because Bauman ran into the goalie, which knocked the puck off, or knocked the uh, goal off. So Greenfield just pretty much having their way. Uh, no, you're right, they're going to face it off. You know what I think? I think they, they're going to face it off here because the defenseman was the one that ran him into the goalie. Otherwise, that would have been outside the zone. That's Shot what? from the high slot, blocked in front. That was Pruzak again. Now a whistle. High sticking is the call. But it's not a penalty. It's just a high sticking on the on the puck. Just a face off in the defensive zone for East Hampton. Barnes now on the draw with Anoy and Pruzak. Puck controlled by East Hampton. There but not out. Kept in. Top of the slot. Puck is loose and... Finally skated out by the Eagles. This is Pete Sullivan on the left wing. Bumped by Harris. Sullivan behind the net. Sullivan knocks it through. And MJ Pollen swings it out. Looking like a big bird coming out of his own end. Puck is lost to East Hampton and dumped back in. And this is going to be no icing as they look like it was icing, but they didn't call it. Barnes now slams it around. Not out, though. Kept in by East Hampton. Big collision. Now bearing in. Shot. Blocked by Drew. Didn't quite get good wood on that shot. Did Fugil. And back to the point. Fugil now with it on the left wing boards. Bangs it down behind the net. Ryan O'Connor after it for East Hampton. And Lenoy with a backhand pass out. This is Roach just on. Aiden Roach has a goal tonight. Slides it in front. Nobody home. As though Sullivan was the trailer but wasn't quite up to the play. And the Eagles clear it out. Harris going after it. No icing is the call. Harris gets elbowed off the puck by Fugel. And McColdrick now. McColdrick gets slashed on the way up. No call. McColdrick still with it. Gets hit. Puck is knocked loose. He's tempting getting awful liberal with the sticks there, Todd Howe. Yeah, Fugel uh, really wanted to uh, lay a solid hit over on the side. Just missed him. Hit the boards. But... You don't let your frustration get to you here. There's still a game. Two on two break ahead for East Hampton. This is Sullivan. A shot and a save by Drew. He hangs on. Gets bumped for his trouble. But Fugil is getting pretty nasty out there. Taking some liberties with the Greenfield goaltender. Face off will be to Drew's left with 6.23 to go in the game in Greenfield with a three goal lead. 5-2. Yeah, Fugel's just trying to get to the net. It looked like he was going to stay on the ice, but he's leaving now. So again, it looks like they're going to try and match up. They are matching up lines. It's kind of comical, all the players just getting toward the bench and just trying to mix it up and fool the other team. But uh, now we have the uh, second two lines out there, I think. Nope, see, they snuck Fugel back out there. Yep. Just trying to get that opportunity to go against this line. The if East Hampton wants to get back in the game, this will be the shift. Sullivan on the draw, won by Greenfield, and lifted up and out. Back after it's Delisle. The Barnes line is out there now for Greenfield. Now a steal and a shot and a save by Darling, as that was a turnover that I don't think Darling expected. Yeah, now East Hampton's taking their top line off the ice, so Greenfield will be able to match up. And the, the Barnes, again, 
brought the puck in. I mean, you, you got East Hampton taking a risk, keeping that line on the ice, and uh, he brought it deep. Bryant shot goes way wide of the net. Harris now over after it. Shot goes across ice. And Bryant's able to come back and get it at center ice, and Greenfield will have to start over. Bryant now. Up ahead, blocked. Nice play by Pete Sullivan to push it back into the zone. Harris now goes cross ice to Bryant. Bryant spins it up. Big hit on Kruzak. Penalty coming up. That's going to be on Delisle, and that's going to be boarding. Shot score! Barnes made him pay for it. As Delisle's not going to go to the box, it's going to be a goal, but Delisle's going to argue with the ref. What are you arguing about? You just got scored on. It's kind of nice to see Barnes get rewarded. I thought he's had a great game tonight. And his line mate gets destroyed over here on the boards. He takes the puck in all the way deep in the zone and fires a shot low in the right-hand corner. Kyle Barnes, a measure of revenge for the boarding of his line mate, Pruzak. And it's 6-2 Greenfield by four with 5.37 to go. Where the wheels have coming off East 10th and Wagon in this third period, for sure. Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with the win. They just don't have a big bench, and they're, and they're tired. They, they look tired on the ice. Adam Bouchard, I think Adam Bouchard wants Delisle to go in the box anyway. That was a pretty wicked hit, and Prusak could not defend himself, could not stop that. But it's going to be a goal either way. Yeah, Bouchard's not going to get his wish, but being up by four goals, I think he's happy. Face-off will be at center ice. It's going to be Roach now out there with Clancy and O'Sullivan. So Clancy gets a couple of shifts here. East Hampton controls, dumps it in behind the net. MJ Pollen is after it. Pollen to Clancy. Oh, an East Hampton player lost a glove as they wiped out. Up ahead to Roach. Roach now with it. Roach in the high slot. Shot. Save. Just wide of the net. And Greenfield knocks it in behind the East Hampton at 5.05 to go in the game. O'Sullivan now with it. And Pruzak gets an assist after getting buried in that uh, hit by Delisle. So turnabout's fair play there. I don't care if he didn't touch the puck. He deserved an assist. <laughs> Paul it now. Up ahead to Sullivan, right wing. Puck is knocked into the corner by East Hampton. Back to the point. Actually knocked back into the corner. Now Sullivan has it on the, far, on the right wing boards. Backhands it up and out. Porter Clancy on a four check. Along with Adam Savoy who's out there for Greenfield. Savoy now with it. Broken up, knocked loose. McColdrick tries to push it up ahead. And it's pushed back in by East Hampton. Sullivan's shot is blocked by Paulin. Puck knocked behind the net. MJ Paulin now. Up the boards for Matt Wilhite out of Athol into the game. Wilhite up ahead to Sammy Knight. Sammy Knight on a right wing four check. Backhands it across. Goes behind the net. McColdrick at the point. Snapshot just wide of the net. It's like a shooting gallery in the East 10th end of the ice in this third period. Sullivan now. Backhands it up ahead. And the pass in front by Marowitz broken up. Back after it is Sammy Knight. Knight up the right wing side. Knight backhands it up ahead to Savoy in the East Hampton territory. 3.31 to go in the game. Greenfield with six unanswered goals since the beginning, the middle of the second period. That's been the story here in the second part of this game. Adam Savoy now behind the net in the corner, bumped in the Greenfield end of the ice. And Savoy, head man to Knight. Sammy Knight after it. Quick line change for Greenfield. Knight tries to shoot it from the top of the circle. Is blocked. Centering pass is going to be covered by Darling. Faceoff will be to his left with 3.03 to go. Greenfield seems to be in pretty control of this game. We haven't talked much about uh, Drew making many saves this period. They just haven't had the opportunity for East Hampton. And now they're throwing the body around a little bit more, and I think that's more out of frustration than anything else. Barnes is out there. Barnes is centering Porter Clancy. Quick shot off the draw and a save by Clancy as Clancy nailed that one right on Darling. And Darling covers it up. Also out there is Jake Croto from Franklin Tech, the sophomore on the right wing. 
Again, a shot goes behind the nets, off the draw. And the Eagles banging up and out of the zone. Third up ahead to Barnes. Barnes beats one man. Barnes backhands it in front. Looking to feed Porter, skipped over his stick and skated back out by the Eagles. Clearing pass broken up by Barnes, slammed down behind the net. Big hit in the corner as the Eagles try to push it out. Kept in though by Bowie Harris, slams it around behind the net. And on the far wing boards, Savoy over there bumping after it. And they, they knock it down. This is gonna be icing. We'll take a 30 second break. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield brought to you by Gilmore and Farrell Insurance. the draw, a quick backhander by Sammy Knight is covered up by Darling. 1.59 to go in the game. 6-2 Greenfield. Face off to the left of the East Hampton net. Battle for it on the far wall. Cleared out. Now Greenfield trying to knock it back in. That is was Bauman, Kevin Bauman out there. And East Hampton slams it down into the Greenfield end of the ice. No icing as it was deflected. Up the boards, Kevin Bauman trying to push it up on the left wing side. And some help from Sammy Knight. And it's clear. Knight after it, battling in front of the penalty box. And it goes cross ice to Matt Wilhite. And pushed back up by East Hampton. Wilhite now with it. Wilhite ahead. Looking to set up Knight. And East Hampton's able to push it into the Greenfield zone. Cross ice pass ends up on Wilhite's stick. Wilhite clears the zone to Barnes. Barnes backhands it up. One minute to play in the game. And this is going to be icing. We'll go down and face it off next to the East Hampton goal, Todd Howe, but this one's pretty much in the books. Yeah, I think this one's over, but don't turn off your radio stations. We have a lot of good things <laughs> to say. All right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Grief will have another offensive uh, face off. They get some. Uh, some players into the game, getting some action. And let's see if we can pop another one in on either side. Face off to the right of Darling. 6-2 is the score with Greenfield well in front. Face off goes out of the zone. And here comes East Hampton. Pushing ahead. Behind the net is Ryan O'Connor trying to slide it in front, blocked. Now Sullivan behind there, digging after it. As is Liam Reynolds. And Greenfield comes away with it. There's up but not out. Now it does go. No, nope. now it's back in. And the wave slams it down to the East Hampton end. 33 seconds left. And as the Eagles had the better of it, I think, scoring-wise in the first period. Now here's a shot on Drew and a save covered up. But it's been all Greenfield since the middle part of the second period. And they'll face off to Drew's right with 20 seconds left. East Hampton came out with a great game plan. They dominated, really, the first 10 minutes of the game. But then Greenfield kind of realized that they were playing that soft box. They were able to work on the outsides. Their cycling was working. And they really took advantage of it once they were able to get the shots through the net. Too much depth, too, I think, for Greenfield. Too many, just I too many. I think it just did, they had a better, a deeper team. And Greenfield's able to clear it out. Up ahead, this is Savoy pushing it into the corner. Gets bumped. 10 seconds to go. And now an East Hampton player comes over, gets physical. And this is where it gets a little scary at the end of a game like this. And that is how it will end. The final score from Collins One Arena, the Greenfield Greenway beat the East Hampton Eagles by a count of six to two. We'll take a two minute break, come back and wrap it up. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield, brought to you by Gilmore and Farrow Insurance. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by 
Extreme Networks, customer-driven networking for your business. Software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure. ExtremeNetworks.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. Webbs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in the center of South Deerfield. Back out here at Collins Bowling Arena, Chris Collins, Todd Howe. Our studio producer is Todd Howe, being heckled by A.D. Mike Kaczewski. Greenfield High School, big winners tonight against the East Hampton Eagles, 6-2. to two. Lots of people getting involved in the scoring, Todd Howe. It was a fun game to watch. It was a fun game to watch. Greenfield ended up out shooting East Hampton again in the third period, 9-6, to six, for a game total of 38-21. to 21. Uh, Greenfield stack keeper, Aviana Bouchard, uh, I believe she's related to the coach. Did a great <laughs> job getting me the numbers. Uh, sometimes you come back after a year-long break and you forget you're supposed to be keeping track of things like shots. So right. thankful she was sitting next to me, and I appreciate the help. Goals by Kyle Barnes, Brian Bauman. Also, Aiden Roach scored in this game. Uh, who else did we have? Derek Lenoy. Derek Lenoy scored. I mean, six goals. I mean, we had a, a, a pretty, uh, pretty good uh, offensive performance tonight across the board by Greenfield. Especially, I think, uh, beginning in the middle part of that second period, which is where the tide really started to turn. When the physical play started up again, I think Greenfield really took over that game. And in the end, East Hampton was just gassed in that third period. Yeah, and I think the hitting actually helped them get gassed. I think they were, they were able to play with them. They were keeping pace with them. But when you get hit, it just takes a little more out of your body. And that slowed East Hampton down. Greenfield was the more aggressive team in that sense. And it was kind of nice to see Greenfield really get some balanced scoring from both lines because I thought that second line was really playing well. Lenoise, Barnes, and Prusak, they just seemed to do everything right, weren't getting any opportunities. And, well, they scored the first goal, and, and I think they uh, ended up scoring three of them. They did. It was, it was a really a solid performance. Those two lines of Greenfield both played very, very well, and I think uh, just overall you could just tell Greenfield was the better team. And in the end, East Hampton just ran out of gas. But credit the Greenfield Green Wave for not giving up six unanswered goals after they yield the first two. And they come away with a 6-2 win. Final thoughts, Todd Howe. I really enjoyed the game. I'm glad to be back. Uh, I do want to thank the sponsors. It's nice to be able to do this four times in the regular season. Uh, in the past couple years, we've been coming out just for the playoffs. So uh, it'll be good to be able to see the team from our seats up here in the perch. And just enjoy the game. It was fun. You know, guys... Bring your portable radios. Is that those still exist? <laughs> they still exist. Bring your portable radios. Come to the game. There's a 50 50 raffle. Enjoy it. This is a really fun game here tonight. Our next broadcast of Hockey Night in Greenfield takes place three weeks from tonight in this building as the South Hadley Tigers come to town. The final score the Greenfield Greenway beat the East Hampton Eagles by a count of 6 2. For my broadcast partner, Todd Howe, and our studio producer, Dave Reno, I'm Chris Collins saying so long from Collins Moyland Arena on Hockey Night in Greenfield. And welcome back to the CMA, the Collins Moylan Arena in Greenfield. Skate Dr. Lou Bordeaux here with you now. First of all, thanks so much to our friends from Bear Country for some outstanding play-by-play -play efforts tonight. And what a hockey game we got to see. Green Wave ended up skating away with a 6-2 victory, a hard-fought victory over the East Hampton Eagles before another raucous crowd here at the CMA. We're going to recap the highlights of tonight's hockey game. It was in the first period that East Hampton got on the board first. A face-off win by Tyler Galpin was pulled back to the point. Garen Fuccio, who is always a perennial scorer for East Hampton, passed the puck off to Tyler Galpin, who got a wrist shot off from the point, and it went bar down. First thing we know, it's 1-0 East Hampton. Not the way the Green Wave expected the game to start, but sometimes you have no control over those things. And that was the only goal in the first period. East Hampton skated into the locker room with a 1-0 lead after one, despite being outshot by the Green Wave 10-8. Second period got underway. 
And another point shot through a screen. And for his second goal of the night, Tyler Galpin again. Got the puck in through traffic. And East Hampton took the 2-0 lead. Again, this is not the game that we were expecting. I was on the bench tonight, and it was time to recalibrate, as they say. And recalibrate the Green Wave did. They would not look back on that. Gave up the two goals to East Hampton, and then Green Wave scored the next six in a row. First one of those six, Aiden Roach penetrated in front of the East Hampton net, got in close, and he was able to finish off a play from Sean O'Sullivan and Brian Bowman. Got the green wave on the board, made it two to one. A little bit later in the second period, there was a turnover at the East Hampton blue line. Shane Prusak was opportunistic, picked up the puck. He and Derek Lenoise went in on a two on one. Shane got the puck over to Lenoise, who right at the top of the paint banged it home. And suddenly we had a 2-2 hockey game. In that second period, the Green Wave outshot East Hampton 19-7. And that was really where the tables turned. So after two periods, a 2-2 tie. Third period, Green Wave came out ready to play some hockey. Early on, Brian Bowman went in unmarked. He was in the high slot. Sean O'Sullivan found him. Fed him a beautiful pass, and Brian made no mistake about it. Gave Greenfield the 3-2 lead, game-winning goal right there. And there was no looking back. About 30 seconds later, Kyle Barnes fed Brian Bowman, and Sean O'Sullivan was right there, and, and Sullivan was far down. Made it a 4-2 hockey game. As play continued in the third period, Shane Prusak broke down the right side. And he just got, you know, they say so many times, get the pucks to the net, pucks to the net. Well, Shane Prusak did exactly that. And it went underneath the East Hampton goaltender. And it was a 5-2 Greenfield lead at that point. Scoring got wrapped up tonight. There was a delayed penalty call for charging. The actual penalty was negated, although the player still serves as uh, minor. Uh, Shane Prusak again broke down the left side, and he was able to get the puck off to Kyle Barnes, who got the goal, made it 6-2. And that was all she wrote here at the Collins Boylan Arena. Big 6-2 character win for the Green Wave tonight. Now, the next two Green Wave games are going to be a couple of road games. On Wednesday night, January 8th, we're going to be out at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Rink in North Adams. Game time is 7 o'clock out there. And one week from tonight, next Saturday, Green Wave take their first road trip out to the Navin Rink out in Marlboro, Mass. to take on Assabet Valley. So check GreenWaveHockey.com for the full schedule and information. That's all from now for our entire crew for FCAT Sports. My buddy Alec Eckel, won't call him Smart Alec tonight. Our friends from Bear Country, thank you again for the play-by-play. -play. I'm the skate Dr. Lou Bordeaux saying good night from Greenfield.